I can see everything quite clearly. It has a stark beauty all its own. Congratulations on this incredible series. Um, oh, thank when you. I was watching it, I think I was like this the whole time. I was. It's like cramming a mountain into a cooking pot was the image that came to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, just thinking about it now, it's so startling, all the information that you have, how long time is, for instance. Uh, so tell me why you got into this field. Well, um, it's, uh, yeah, as, as you saw, the series is uh, what, what I'd call a cosmology series, which is sort of... Um, about the origin and evolution of the universe. And, and, and we've made, I've made them before. Um, and so the, the, the challenge is always to find a different way of telling those stories. Because as you said, that they are <laughs> the most challenging stories. Uh, I had a great director who's, um, who's mainly directs um, arts, films, history. He's also directed Shakespeare plays, actually. And, and we got talking about this idea that um, the stars are interesting in one sense because they're, they're finite. They have lives like us. And there will be, a, there were first stars in the universe, which were these huge, giant things, massive stars, very short-lived because they're huge. And then we, there, there will be a last star. Right? So there'll be some yeah. little tiny things. And immediately in that idea, you get the sense the universe is finite, at least in time. But there's a window when things like us can exist in it uh, and once we had that idea we thought that's a uh, it, it delivers quite an emotional punch i think when i mean i really you know again we've, we've done the the end of the sun before yeah, every, everybody does in a documentary about stars the sun dies and you always have these huge graphics with the earth boiling away and the, uh, and we just thought actually let's just see this little light wink out because that's all it is So terrifying. The information is so hard to absorb. I know you know it and it's known, but to see it presented, I suppose, in such a way that's dramatic, you know, with the director and, and poetic and with music was kind of mind bending. It's not the most um, normal science documentary in the series. No. Right? We have some harder science thing. We have a, well, a film on black holes that's very cutting edge and a lot of n n information. And we have one on the origin of the universe, which is really cutting edge. But that that film, I love it because it is more of a, we ended up thinking of it like a hymn almost. It's almost a hymn to stars. It's almost, yeah. there's a relig religiosity to the film. I mean, we had this idea, I think I say it in the film, but we had this idea that stars are uh, in, 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 by some definition, they're gods, right? Because they're yeah. the creators and destroyers of worlds, but they're mortal. They have a lifetime. And one day, as I say in the film, they'll be gone. And so, and it was interesting that some people completely missed that, <laughs> that layer. Have you had backlash about saying gods don't exist? It's, it's something, it's a creation of ours? It's interesting in the film, there is a, there is a, I don't quite say that. I, I got a bit carried away on a mountaintop somewhere <laughs> and said, if you're looking for, it, it was a kind of an ad lib. I said, if, if, you know, if you're looking for gods, then there's the real thing. Cause it was this beautiful sunrise. And, and you know, we, we do paint these things by, by some definition as gods. And so, yeah, the, some people picked up on that. But I, but I say in, in response that, um, my friend, the Dean of Guildford, actually, says that the most important thing about his cathedral, he thinks, is that it's, it's something different in the landscape. You walk in and it forces you to think of something else other than the shopping or whatever it is that you're doing that day. And that's the most important thing about it. Um, the other stuff is important, but kind of secondary. It's just there is more. There is more to this universe than just the things yes. that we, than our everyday lives. And so, it, so we agree profoundly on that. So I think that's what I hope these films do. They just said there's more to, there's more to it. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing <laughs> that we're part of. And, and 
likely we're very rare and fragile things in in this universe you're yeah. doing you're doing a worldwide arena tour with special effects and and music and you're very compelling uh speaking and i wonder and coming to canada and i wonder what people will take away besides being absolutely dazed with knowledge a, a, a show which is in part about our emergence in the universe but also about our future what 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 could we become so where have where did we come from and what could we become yes. and also about the structure of reality itself so there's a great there's a lot of um, black holes are the thing that I'm particularly interested in because I do some research and I have a PhD student working on black holes. So there's a kind of central element of the nature of space and time. What is time? What is space? What are the fundamental building blocks of the universe? But the over the arc is is driven by music and some beautiful images of our potential, of our possible future in space if we don't mess it up here on Earth. Um, by a great artist called Eric Bernquist, who's a visual artist from S Sweden. So, so yes. we have a, a great collaboration. You know, you think about these things, you know, what does it mean to live this tiny life in this infinite universe? There are people who've thought about that, <laughs> like Mahler, for example. So Mahler's music, which I, I love a lot, is in the, is in the live show. Because Mahler thought about that. He thought about the fragility of human existence. And he actually answered it. He came up with an answer that's extremely eloquent. And, and actually, his, his 10th symphony, the first movement of his 10th symphony, which was unfinished, actually, he died before he finished it, is in the live show. So, so yeah. I also try and bring as many people. I say in the show that we're all interested in what does this stuff mean? As you said, you know, this vast universe, uh, the things we've discovered, what does it mean? And I point out that you, you won't find meaning through the eyepiece of a telescope. But you need the whole armory of the human intellect and culture to answer it. <laughs> right, but I'm not going to answer it. You know, you, don't, you, can't, you can't say to a physicist, what, what's the meaning of life? Well, the physicist isn't going to know. But together with the great composers and artists and all the things, that, this, is what, this is all we've asked ourselves, isn't it, really? Uh, for, for millennia, this is what we've been trying to answer. So I try and bring it all in. As you said, it's big and we've got huge LED screens. It's designed for enormous arenas in the UK. So, you know, 14,000 people. So the, the, the graphics and the music are, are prepared for... There's even a version we're trying to put together with an orchestra, with the full orchestra. So we're just going to do it with you know, a symphony orchestra. So the whole thing is designed to be massive. 